And I want to thank Mr. Bishop because I do think there is a clear understanding of what we're trying to do here. There is a process in this bill. It doesn't happen immediately. We can certainly discuss exactly what that looks like, but I think the designation and the process that follows to ensure that we are uh, providing opportunities for these platforms to uh, make their case is, it is in the bill. Um, and so for the people that think we're throwing a grenade, um, I would say to the grenade analogy, there have been a few analogies made here with grenades, I would say the grenade that is being thrown right now is being thrown at small businesses. I mean, we are not allowing the space for small businesses to compete and to thrive. And so to the colleagues on both sides of the aisle that are supportive of a strong tool, a hammer, if you will, in the toolbox, it allows for at least a push uh, that is very, very, a, a very, very real threat to break up these monopolies. And to the, those who are opposing it, I, I have been stunned to just listen to all of the support for big tech, big tech, big tech. And I get it. I've got big tech in my district. I am grateful for the things that they do. I am grateful for the jobs that are provided. But why are we not talking about small businesses in this country? Why are we not talking about small businesses? For those who are opposing this bill on both sides of the aisle, you want to fight for big tech? Let me read you some of the things that we have gotten on this bill, not just from Democrats, not from Democratic districts, from Republicans, independents, and people across this country in conservative districts. Here's one that we received from a Florida-based online reseller of beauty products who describes himself as a conservative, lifelong Republican. I'd like to take a moment and express our support for H.R. 3825 Ending Platform Monopolies Act. This bill is written directly and effectively addresses the abuses online sellers like ourselves have been suffering over many years. For years, we have seen Amazon.com suppress our listings by putting us at the bottom of the seller queue and denying us the buy box, even though we offer the best price. Sellers that pay for Amazon services, such as FBA, that's Fulfillment by Amazon, and advertising are given the inside track on product pages, even though their prices can be up to 25% higher than sellers like us that do not use Amazon fulfillment services or advertising. For years, we have seen how Amazon.com colludes with brands to knock off third-party sellers that offer exponentially best, better prices. We have seen them use our sales data to determine which brands and products sell well in order to reach out to these brands and offer to remove third-party sellers if Amazon is given exclusive rights to the brand on Amazon.com. This practice ends up increasing prices dramatically for consumers and devastate sellers like us that make huge investments in infrastructure, inventory, and personnel. This bill will allow us to expand our operation, help us grow, help us hire employees, and provide better prices to American consumers. This bill transcends politics and hits at the heart, at the heart, my emphasis, of what America is about. Free markets, small business access to grow, and more importantly, better choices for Americans. Bottom line, and this is in capitals, all capitals. This bill will create jobs, foster healthy competition, and will promote better prices for Americans. So- Would the gentleman want yield? I would. Thank you, ma'am. I was getting so passionate, though. Very, very, <laughs> very effectively so. To the point that I was arguing a moment ago in terms of what this bill represents, you don't have any doubt about, uh, about the fact that the four companies are, are, des are covered by the covered platform definition, do you? I do not. Okay. And, and you don't have any doubt in your mind that those four companies are going to meet the factual test here. That is to say, they, they are um, they're a covered platform and they uh, own or control a line of business other than the platform, so they're selling services or products. You don't have any doubt about that either, right? I do not. You don't really think that there's some need for an elongated bureaucratic process for the FTC to adjudicate whether that's the case, do you? Well, I believe there should be some process. I'm willing to talk with you about what that process should be, but what we tried to do in the bill is ensure that, uh, you know, that we are crafting a bill that actually allows for a legitimate process and so that there isn't just a designation that comes along. I, you know, I was saying to Mr. Roy earlier that there was a lot of discussion about Alibaba and other companies. The reality is this isn't just targeting these four companies, 
down the road because companies are growing very quickly. Alibaba has a growth rate of 26% and is at 580, not 600. But very quickly, they will move into this. But the question is these three determinations together. If you have to look at, it's not just market cap. You have to look at the users, and you have to look at the competing lines of business. Alibaba does not compete with Amazon, not only on scale, but in terms of the services and lines of business that they occupy. So there is a difference between having an Alibaba that is a platform for selling products versus an Amazon that is selling third-party products and is, ma is managing the platform that sells those third-party products, and then having the actual rules for who gets to sell. I mean, where is the free choice in that for my Republican colleagues and my Democratic colleagues to say that you are supporting choice, but a consumer doesn't have the choice to look yeah. at all of the products that are actually there? I'm sorry, yeah. Mr. Chairman, I didn't realize my time had expired. It was a longer answer than I anticipated. <laughs> well, it was my <laughs> we'll time, Mr. Bishop. Uh, yes, it was, absolutely. <laughs> the, the gentle ladies.